Protect your packets with a quick and dirty open VPN server build. All that and more this time on Hack5. This episode of Hack5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack5. I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. That's Kirby Kitchen. That is Kirby it Kitchen. It is. It's Kirby Kitchen! It's Kirby! Um, we haven't had Kirby on set in so long, so we wanted to say hello to everybody. Hi, hi. everybody! Hey, we're going to be talking about <laughs> protecting our packets. We are, but first, I wanted to thank everybody for coming out to our Hack5 open warehouse thing that we held over the weekend. It was a lot of fun, so thank you to everybody who showed up for that. It was pretty epic. Uh, I can't begin to describe how much fun it was, and we will for sure be doing this again. In fact, so cool. we're kind of developing something really exciting mm -hmm. because so many people were just really enthusiastic about some of the uh, interesting things that we were doing yeah. with with micros and nano quadcopters. Ooh, so that's fun. Stay tuned for that. And I also want to mention, of course, thank you to everybody who has been uh, supporting us on ThreatWire, which is our show about security, privacy, and everything that's happening with internet, internet freedom. freedom. Uh, this week, we already found out that there's another, yet another flash vulnerability. There's a zero-day exploit that was found in Java. And 90% of the patent lawsuits that have come out so far, uh, I think it was in the last year, were from patent trolls of tech lawsuits. Yay, Isn't that trolls. crazy? Yeah, patent trolls. You can check out ThreatWire on the Hack5 YouTube channel as your source for security, privacy, internet freedom. And thank you so much for helping us reach our latest milestone goal. It yes. was very epic. It's brought to you guys by you guys. Yay. And it's completely independent and ad-free. I love that. Thank you. So, I'm just excited to be doing this because we haven't gotten into I a VPN too. server build in quite a while. Yeah. So we're a little overdue for this one. So this one is like really quick and dirty because, you know, VPNs are really great for protecting all of your internet usage, your internet traffic, whenever you're on untrusted networks like public Wi-Fi or maybe <laughs> the Wi-Fi that you find over at your favorite coffee shop, for example. So many times it's really thrown around as advice to just get a VPN, as people say. I mean, even we've said it too. But where should you get an actual VPN? I mean, when you're signing up for one that's like 10 bucks a month from some random VPN service in the cloud, from some internet service, you're basically handing over money and the very same information that you want to protect, which are your packets. Because how do you know that they're actually going no. to be securing that stuff? I you mean, know. they could probably see everything that you're doing. Not that we know any VPN services run by our friends with the no. shiny shoes, but today we will be showing you how to protect your packets with a quick and dirty VPN server build that you can run on a virtual machine at home. So, so theoretically, if you trust your internet connection at home, then you could trust your internet connection when you're out and about using the VPN. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get started with this. Uh, we are going to be using all open source for this build. So for the operating system, we're using Ubuntu 14.04 because it's the current uh, one that's LTS, long-term support. And then the install is really similar if you're using like CentOS or Debian, OpenSUSE, or Fedora too. Yes, and for the VPN server, we're actually going to be using a version of OpenVPN called Access Server. And basically, Access Server is essentially it's a pretty front end for OpenVPN. It simplifies the setup. It's got a nice little web GUI to, to get everything going. And it has a ridiculously easy setup for the clients, so be it Windows, Mac, even Android and Ooh. iOS, and of course, Linux. Yay. OK, so first we're going to start off with installing the Ubuntu server. Mm -hmm. Should I do that on my machine? Yes, you go ahead. Okay. And if you've been following along with our Citrix builds uh, here, we've been playing with Citrix Zen Center, uh, which is another piece of awesome open source software. It's a virtual machine hypervisor that allows us to run multiple machines. We have a couple of these running, a Kali box, a Windows box, a couple others. and so. In fact, we just used Zen Orchestra mm -hmm. uh, to go ahead and use a nice little open source front end so that we can manage it all over the web, which is super nice. So, so let's I'm create a new virtual right machine. Now. So which machine should we put this on? Actually, let's go ahead and create a new virtual machine. So oh, from yeah. the drop down okay. from our Zen server test guy, let's hit that drop down and say new virtual machine. Do, 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 do. Create VM. All right, and are we going to use a template for this one? Yes, we yeah, are. I guess the we will. Ubuntu 14.04. 14 14 Tar. Name of our new VM. What do you want to do? Uh, open VPN is fine. OK. No description. CPUs, RAM, all that looks good. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. OK. Any changes that you want to make? No. Nope. No? Just okay. need to use that ISO. Um, doesn't let me click on ISO. So, oh, there we go. And we are, are we using uh, AMD 64? Yep. And 
1404. Should we use dot two? Server, yeah. So we want to use the server one. Yep. Okay. All set. All right. Create VM. Item list. Oh, yeah. And this would be pull ETH wide, zero. I believe. VM creation started. Okay. Great. Now we can pull up the console. And I'll hit play on that. It's an Ubuntu server. Install. Okay, I chose my language, location, keyboard. What do you want to call it? I don't know. Uh, VPN is good. Okay. User account. I'm going to call it Schnurbs. <laughs> no, I'm call it Hack5. Oh. All right, fine. We'll create a Snubs account later when we do a VPN. Username for the account. Yep. Hack5. Okay. Password, um, that one, Starbucks, JK Law, and then, yes, time zone correct, yes, mm, let's do guided, yep, virtual disk one, 8.3 gigs, so we're going to keep it at 8.3 gigs. Write changes to disk, yes. You will need a proxy. No, we don't. We don't need a proxy? OK. And we do want to update uh, automatically, install security updates automatically. And we're going to check mark open SSH server, none of the other ones. Do we want to install Grub? Yes. Installation is complete. So we can continue from here. OK. My job is done. So now, once it reboots, I'm going to log in as hack5 and run the ifconfig command. So this is hack5 and my Starbuck password, jklaw. OK. And Yay, we have a server. We want to run ifconfig. OK, so now we have our oh, good. IP addresses. 10, 73, 31, what does that say? 240. 240, OK, I'm going to SSH in as hack5 at 10, 73, 31, 240. Shin's wonderful password. And there we go. I am now on our server, so I'm going to go ahead and set up the access server. So you name tack A. And I can see here we have a 64-bit version. And that's important because if I go over to the downloads, you'll see that there are both 32-bit, uh, which are shown as I386, as well as 64-bit, which are uh, AMD 64s. And so, like I what said. What is that website? So this is uh, swupdate.openvpn.com uh, okay. slash AS. And that's where you can download the latest version. And we're going to Yay. do just that onto our server using wget, because why not? Because it's easy. And as you can see here, actually, there's you know, Debian and Fedora and Ubuntu and OpenSUSE and CentOS. So you know, there's a lot of support here. So let's just go ahead and grab the latest version. And once that's downloaded, I can go ahead and ls tag la and whoops, ls tag la. And I can <laughs> see there's my file. Yay. And I'm going to go ahead and install that deb by using uh, dpkg tag i for install and then the OpenVPN. Ah, I have to sudo that. Cool. Now at this point, we are instructed that we need to run passwd openvpn because mm -hmm. we need to create a uh, password for this new user that it has created. So. Clear the screen, sudo pass wd open VPN, and give it a password. And so if I scroll up here, we'll actually see that it tells me that here's my admin interface and ah. here's the client interface. So I'm going to go ahead and click so into. So 240. Yes. So I'm going to copy this and head over to my browser. And of course, I will get an error saying, oh no, scary. It's using you know, its own certificate. certificate? Oh. I haven't bought a certificate yet. Well, so JK. I'm going to proceed. 
and log in as OpenVPN, that user that we had just created. And I'm going to accept the EULA. And Great. there we go. We've got an OpenVPN access server running. It's really pretty simple to set up from here. I'll want to go to general under authentication. And for simplicity's sake, and we'll touch back on this later, I'm going to choose local, hit save settings, update the running server. And now I need to create a user. So user permissions. I'm going to go ahead and create a user called Snubs. Snurbs. Snurbs. And I'm going to check allow auto login. We'll get into more of that later. Save those settings. So if I go back to user permissions now and click show next to Snurbs, I can go ahead and give her a password, which is her cat's name. Yay! Because that's so hard. <laughs> right. Save <laughs> settings and then update that running server. Okay. And that, that was it. That's easy. As far as the setup is concerned, which is kind of ridiculous crazy. Now we're you know really just going with a lot of defaults here, and we're going to loop back around and do a lot more uh, kung fu with this later. But go ahead and get on this VPN okay. now, Shannon. So this so, is HTTP colon slash slash. It's 10.73.31.240 colon 943. And then this time, don't do the slash admin. Right, because. And you have to do nothing. HTTPS. Aww. Two three four. Two four zero. Dang it. Nine four three? Nine four three. Okay. There it is. I understand. Bad. Yeah, I know. Okay. And now log in as snurbs. All lowercase? All lowercase. So now I want to click here to continue. And you get a I'm fancy executable. Open VPN. Mm -hmm. So in this case, OpenVPN Access Server has actually already just detected that you're running Windows mm -hmm. and offered you the most appropriate uh, if, uh, download. That's if handy. I do the same thing here and go to 107331 240, what was it, 943, mm -hmm. as a user oops, on HTTPS and proceed and log in as snubs. It can't detect automatically what OS I'm running, so it'll actually offer me to download uh, uh, OpenVPN Connect for Windows, for OS X, for Android, for iOS, and of course, even doing the setup for Linux. Cool. I can you know, follow the instructions here to install it for Fedora or Ubuntu or whatever have you. OK, so once I have it downloaded, the little icon appears in my little Windows bar at the bottom. I can click on Connect. And yes. He's unverified, yes and then it'll connect me to the VPN. There I am. OK, my connected. connection has been established. Very cool. Isn't that rad? So That's great. Now you have an IP address on that OpenVPN AS server that we set up on top of Ubuntu 14.04. Right. And of course, mm -hmm. we should probably mention, like, obviously. What use is this when I'm on the same network? Not much right now. Yeah. But we did get it installed quick and dirty, and really the next step is to do a little bit of port forwarding mm -hmm. and get it so that you can access this from outside. It's really just a matter of uh, 443 mm -hmm. TCP, I believe, and then there, or no, 443 uh, TCP, and then there's also another UDP. UDP. Anyway, it's, we're going to get more into awesome fun gymnastics that you can do with OpenVPN. Uh, and, you know, I should also mention that OpenVPN access server, we're kind of cheating because it's not quite open source, it's, it's free. <laughs> as in beer, but not free as in speech. Oh. Uh, but you can test it out for free for up to two concurrent users. You can take a look here. Uh, basically, these are the difference between community edition and access server. And so, you know, if you're looking for something with full LDAP support and uh, stuff like that, it, it's got a lot of really nice features. I, I really like the GUI. Uh, the web interface, as we showed you, makes it stupid simple. But we can, of course, do the same exact thing with the Open Source Community Edition later. And we're going to be, of course, getting into more fun things that you can do with this. But I wanted to show you guys, like, hey, it was that easy. Yeah, that's awesome. So you've got no excuse now. Let us know what you guys think. What kind of fun things are you doing with OpenVPN? Uh, what's your favorite VPN? Maybe you're all like, nah, man, I'm still using PPTP. It rocks oh. with MS Chap V1. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. Domain.com and .club came to Hack5 with a great idea. Build a club all about learning stuff, making things, and having fun. And so we did just that. And man, what a brilliant idea. 
We recently hosted our very first ever open house at the Hack5 warehouse, and with the help of Domain.com and .club, we put on a mini land party, micro drone obstacle course, 3D print fest, quadcopter race, and killer barbecue. And I must say, these guys get it. The internet, and hacker culture in particular, it's all about fostering community. From BBSs to Fidonet to IRC, it's all about coming together and having fun. And what better domain to do it than a dot club? It's perfect because a dot club is universally and globally understood, not just here in the United States. So if you're building a new business or naming your startup, consider a dot club as the ultimate social domain. Join us in the San Francisco Bay Area for workshops and projects and crazy indoor quadcopter races at our very own dot club, hackhouse.club. Then head over to domain.com slash club to register your dot club today. They're only $9.99 a year and there are thousands of awesome options still available. Make sure to use the coupon code HAK5 to save 15% and let the guys over at domain.com know we sent you. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack5. I must say thank you so much for your feedback. Of course, feedback at hack5.org if you want to do it by email. Otherwise, let us know in the comments. We read all of them, and we can't thank you enough for your support. Mm -hmm. Thank you very, very much. And thank you to Eli's mom who gave this to us at the open house. Have you seen what's inside? I have. This I think is you really should open rad. it. Okay. Oh, da -da -da -da. What Cutest could that mean? little turtles. To go along with our duckies. Actually, th this this turtle is the coolest. That one is going this... in my office. Oh, because it has bling. What? You're right. It is a little blingy turtle. When you can keep <laughs> lip gloss in there. Right, and lip gloss. I don't know. Yeah, lip gloss doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you to Eli's mom and yes. to everyone who came out to the first ever Hack Five Warehouse Open House. It was such a huge success. I had so much fun, you know, barbecuing and and playing beanbag games yeah. and oh, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> and doing a little land drones. turtle thing pre-release stuff. 3D printing. Uh, US micro drones, pieces. nano drones were so great. We were flying uh, model aircraft through an obstacle course. <laughs> yeah. We're probably going to be doing a lot more with that with FPV here real soon. But right now it's time to focus on DEF CON. DEF CON's coming up in just a few weeks. We're going to be there with our booth as usual. So definitely come by the vendor area and see us. I think it's open until like 8 p.m. this year. So oh, wow. it's open pretty we're late. Late. Yeah, we're working Wonderful. really late. Bring well, us food. Just hey, kidding. Yeah, they probably won't let you. No, no. You can come <laughs> by with a beer. We'd love yeah, it if you did. Yeah. Hey, bring us a yingling. JK, LOL, but no, seriously. And birthday presents for 10-year-olds. Yes. Yinglings are not <laughs> appropriate for 10-year-olds. Oh, yeah. If you have yingling, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm just saying. Really like okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. HKShop.com if you're not making it out to Vegas for DEF CON. Yep. It's all there on the shop. And thank you so much for your continued support of all things Hack Favity. HAK5.org. You'll find the threat wires and the tech things and the Metasploit minutes and all that, that other good stuff. Hurt. Yes. With that, I'm Darren Gitchen. I'm Purple Haired Snubs. Purple Haired Snubs is back. Trust your technolist. Trust your technolist. You look like a My Little Pony. You look like a My Little Pony. You look like a My Little Pony. I do look like a My Little Pony. I'm like um, my favorite one. What's your favorite My Little Pony? You know what I love is the Corp Eng sticker for Google. Apple pie, butterscotch. <laughs> what? I don't know. Okay. The yes. Google Corp Eng people? I don't think they do. <laughs> <laughs> they might. <laughs> They've got a My Little Pony logo for their anyway, whatever. <laughs> <sighs> it's one of those.